Don't forget the home safety tips we showed you before. Keep electricity away from water, don't use worn extension cords, and watch out for all power lines, both above and below. It's time to learn about lightning. If you should be in a pool, on a lake, or by the beach, when a thunderstorm hits, get away from the water. Lightning runs to ground along the best conductor it finds. Don't be that conductor. A lightning strike can deliver 1 million volts and 30,000 amps. Take shelter in a house or cabin, unless the roof is metal, or in a car where you're insulated from ground by your vehicle's tires. If you happen to be playing golf, don't turn yourself into a lightning rod with a metallic club in hand. I would get off that golf course as quickly as possible and uh, try and stay away from those uh, golf clubs. Uh, I know Lee Trevino, the golfer, he uh, was on a course one time and was struck by lightning. And I know if you've ever seen him on TV, if, if there's any rain in the area, he immediately drops his gloves and runs away. With lots of golfers and thunderstorms, Florida leads the nation in lightning strikes on humans. If you're caught in the open, don't hide under a tree. Take the thunderstorm lying down. You'll get wet but survive. Sitting is better than standing. Lightning will reach for the highest point when it strikes. You want to get low. Why is electricity so dangerous to humans? Simply put, the parts of our bodies communicate with electricity. From the beating of our hearts, to the firing synapses of our brains, every aspect of our biology is controlled by electrical impulses that race down our neural pathways. Just 90 milliamps can disrupt the beating of our hearts. As little as one-tenth of an amp of house current can kill us. If you come across somebody touching a fallen power line, hey, hey. keep away. Is it tough? Power's off. Don't assume that a down line is a dead line. If you try to pull a shock victim away before the power is off, you could become electrocuted yourself. Disconnect the source of the power. If you can't turn it off, use an insulator like a towel or broom handle to pull the victim from the power source. John, John, Dave's down, call 911. If it's a high voltage wire, call for emergency help. There was a, a guy on the crew that we were all friends with. And I yelled for my uh, tool buddy to go uh, call 911. Once the victim is clear, check his breathing. If he is not drawing in air and you are trained in CPR, apply cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Set him down onto the ground, started administering CPR. We were in a real remote location and I continued CPR for about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, my buddy relieved me at that point and continued CPR for a while and I went back and uh, gave it to him again when he got tired. And after about 25 minutes, the uh, fire department showed up, thanked us and said, go, go sit down, we'll take care of it from here. In case of an electrical burn, look for signs of shock where the victim is cold and clammy with a rapid pulse. To treat for shock, keep the victim lying down and covered to prevent loss of body heat. Electrical burns can be deceptive. They can go right through a body, leaving both an entry and exit wound. They can look minor on the outside, but be severe inside. Don't apply grease or oil to the injury. Simply cover it with a sterile dry dressing and get medical help. Knowing CPR is a rewarding thing. Uh, it's good not only at your job, but around your house and uh, with your family members, all, that, all the people that are important to you. Hopefully I never have to use it again. <laughs> but, uh, it, but it is comforting knowing that, that I do have those skills. With a bit of foresight, we can continue to enjoy the myriad benefits of electric power while keeping safe. This is Paul Suchecki for LA City View 35.